is Kim Martin, and this is the sixth chapter of our book, Introduction to Excel 2016, although I am not using the 2016 version, but they are still compatible. So with chapter six, it's just a few um, quick items, accuracy, um, checking for accuracy, how to print using templates. So we'll go on to page 70. So I'm gonna go to the cost of labor table. And we separated the weekdays from the weekends, as you can recall from earlier. Here's the regular hours, and then here's the weekend, and then here's the OT hours. So that the calculations would take place adjacent to the data being calculated. And this is a best practice when designing your worksheets. So Excel will do its best to keep you from making mistakes. If it senses that an error might be in a formula, and you can kind of see this on page 70, each of the cells will display a small green arrow in the upper left corner and kind of an exclamation point and a diamond, kind of like a, a street sign, a warning sign, appears and the cell is selected. So the green arrow indicates a possible formula error. And then if you click on the yellow sign, which you can kind of see on page 70, it kind of gives you more information. Now, sometimes our worksheets get rather large and it becomes difficult to check that we have referenced the correct cells within formulas. There are two handy ways to visually check these relationships, and you can track precedence and dependence using the formula bar. So for that, I'm gonna go into vacation budget, which I forgot to rename. There we go. I'm gonna click on G3, which is actually where I ended up. So I'm gonna to go to the formulas tab and with the intermediate class, we do get a lot more into the formulas tab. So I'm gonna click on the formulas tab. We're just gonna do something really quick with it. And you can kind of see more toward the right side. We have trace precedence and trace dependence. I'm gonna click on trace precedence. And what that does, these blue arrows appear and it shows for the 1440, we took these two numbers. And then if I click on it again, it shows, okay, this is where we got the 2000 from. This is where we got the 560 from. And I, so when we trace the dependence, the 900 is the, derived from the 1440 and so on. All the way. on page 71. Once you have all the arrows, you can just click on remove arrows. Or if you want to just remove the precedence of the dependence, you can do that too. So the formula bar, I'm going to click on G8. I'm going to click on the formula bar. You see how, once again, Excel color codes all of these. You can drag these color coded cells around the worksheet. See, I get a four sided kind of arrow here. You can kind of drag that around and see how now on the very top of the formula bar, the formula changes. And now we will just leave that alone. But that's a really quick way to change the formula references. If you realize you messed up, you can just drag the frame up there so the proper ones are color coded. And on page 72, adding a comment. So you can add a comment, which is kind of like the sticky note, to any cell to explain or ask a question about the contents of the cell. This can be very helpful when sending a workbook to a coworker. Um, to review or explain data, but if you find yourself doing it a lot, you might want to add a column for notes, like it says here with the details. So for example, with the rental car, I'm going to click on rental car and right click. And once I right click, it says new comment. In my version, it might also say insert comment. It just depends. So there's new comment, 
There's my name right there. And I'm only going to use the rental car. You're only going to rent the car if the hotel shuttle for some reason is not available. Now this also gives you the option to reply. So if I were to send this to my coworker, they can reply to me and we can have a little conversation based on this. And then, you can kind of see in the corner here, here it is. I can edit it, I can delete it, or I can resolve it. And so resolving it just kind of means, okay, no one else can comment on this, we fix this, we don't need to add to this conversation anymore. You can just click outside the comment to exit. And on the bottom of page 72, we have um, naming a range of cells. So when we have created a cell range of related numbers, their labels and associated formulas, we've done that. So a worksheet can contain multiple data tables or each table can be separated into its own worksheet within the workbook. So on page 73, either way, the more complex the workbook, the harder it can be to find what you are looking for. So one way to simplify finding the range you need is to name it. So we're still in the vacation budget tab. We're going to select A3 to B9. Here we go. And then we're going to click inside the name box where it says A3. And I'm going to type budget items, no space. And I hit enter. See, I click somewhere else. You can see it's H7, A5. So see, it does kind of delete that. And I bring down the down arrow next to E5, click on budget items. There it is. I to go to cost of labor. See, now it says M8. I can still bring down that down arrow and click on budget items. And it takes me right back to it. Now you can't include Spaces in these names for like for budget items and you cannot begin with a number or punctuation and it must be unique within the workbook. So I can only have one budget items little thing per workbook. Now printing is another thing that can be kind of challenging in Excel. You have to kind of tell it how to print before you actually print. So on the bottom of page 73, the different views in Excel can help you when it comes to printing your worksheets. So the views give you a preview of how the documents will look, including where the page breaks are. You can use the following views to adjust your page for the best result. So there is the view tab. I clicked on the view tab. Normal is what we are in now. There's the page break preview. It shows me where the page breaks are. In the intermediate class, we will kind of manipulate the page breaks a lot more. And then here's page layout where it shows headers and footers. And again, in the intermediate class, we're going to get a lot more into that. So it's page 74. You can see the view options under the view tab, but also they're on the bottom next to the zoom. So if I want to go back to normal, I'll just click on normal down here next to where the zoom tab is in the zoom bar. And I can just go back to normal there. But like on the bottom of page 74, we don't really have any massive worksheets in this class, but say you had one and there are only certain parts of it that you wanted to print. So I'm going to click on the cost of labor tab. And I'm going to select C through M. Although the book does make an error there. So what I'm going to do is highlight C1 to C7 and go all the way to M1 to M7. And then I'll go to page layout and then print area. 
bring down that arrow, set print area. So I basically just told it, all this stuff I highlighted is what I want you to print. Don't print the whole thing. So now I'm going to go to the file tab and scroll down to print. Now you can see it right here, it gives the print preview. It does have it across three, three um, pages, and there is a way to change that too. So we will go to page 75. So we can change the orientation here. So there's landscape orientation. That's a little bit better. And then on page setup at the bottom, you can change it here too. There's the paper size if by chance you have a legal sheet. The margins, you can center it horizontally and vertically. If you want to add a header and footer, you can do it here and on the sheet. You can do the grid lines, although um, I'll have to use a different example for that because this has already been formatted. So there's different ways to format that. And let me go back and show you how to do it on a different one. So let's try it on vacation budget. So file and then print. So I didn't specify a print area for it. So in this case, There's the landscape orientation that way. I mean, in this case, we are able to get it all on one page. So I'll go to page setup. You can fit it to one page. It does make it really small, but there is a way there. Fit to one page is wide by one page tall. And again, there's the paper size. There are the margins. I can make that horizontally and vertically centered if you wanted. Header and footer, which is another thing we're going to address in the intermediate class. And then for the sheet, because you can notice when it defaults, it doesn't have the grid lines there. And I do like printing the grid lines. It makes it a little bit easier to read. So those are a few examples on how to print out the spreadsheet itself. So I'm just going to go back. So on the monthly budget tab, which I just clicked on, there are two charts here that are just kind of sitting on top. If I want to just print the pie chart, I would click on the pie chart, go to file, go to print, and it's just the pie chart. It's not the data, it's not anything else. So if you wanted to do handouts of your chart or something like that, that's how you would just print out the chart. And once again, I know this chapter was brief. I am always available. If you have any questions and would like to make an appointment, usually via a video call, you can always call me at 214-525-6145 and we can set up an appointment if you need help with any part of the book or anything like that. And this actually concludes the introduction to Excel book. Thank you very much.